Chapter 25, Hopper. I stand next to Miss Yoon, watching all the babies through the window. They won't remember any of this, will they? Nope. Why do we start remembering when we get older? Miss Yoon looks at me. Well, Hopper, it has to do with how our brains develop. I know that, but there's so much more to know. I wonder if I'll ever feel like I understand how it all works. People, the world, everything. I wish I could remember all the way back to being a baby. What did I know back then before I could remember what I knew? I guess I'll never know. Quinny and Miss Porridge come back from the bathroom. Miss you, no good, you're still here, says Quinny. I forgot to ask you something super important. When are you coming back to school? Because that sub they gave us is a giant meanie, and we really miss you. Guys, I miss you too, but please try to get along with the sub for now. Why don't you just bring the baby to school, like you did when he was still a little beach ball? We could set up a crib in the classroom. Quinny, I could help. I have two little sisters, you know. I can even change diapers. Come on, Miss Yoon. It'd be even better than having a guinea pig in the room. Quinny, that's enough, says Miss Porridge. It's time to leave Miss Yoon in peace. On the way home, Miss Porridge is not in a good mood. She says we lied and tricked her and put ourselves in danger by running off without permission. She says she expects more of us than that kind of unacceptable nonsense. Furthermore, the hospital does not have Hopper's tonsils, she says. What a ridiculous idea. Wait till I tell your parents how you ran off like that. No, please don't. It was just one tiny little mistake, Quinny cries. A big mistake, says Miss Porridge. But if you tattle on us, then we'll be punished and grounded, and we won't be able to come and take care of the chickens. And those poor chickens will get lonely and hungry and smelly, and your screened-in porch will smell like a giant pile of poop. You don't want that, do you? Please, Miss Porridge, think of those poor innocent chickens. Quinny elbows me and makes a face. Think of the chickens, I say. <laughs> Miss Porridge gives Quinny a sharp look in the mirror. She pretends to scoff, but I can tell it's really more of a laugh. Luckily, we beat my parents home, so nobody has to find out about this trip at all. Mom would freak out if she knew that Miss Porridge let her prisoner escape. Chapter 26, Quinny. Screet, 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 screet. Disco wakes up t way too early again on Tuesday. So I have a little talk with her while I'm doing my chicken chores. Disco, do you really want Miss Porridge to send you away? Screech, screech, screeches Disco with an attitude. Shh, you better cut this out before she turns you into chicken pot pie. Disco turns and shrieks an extra huge screech at the porch um, and at the window that looks into Miss Porridge's house. Sss, hisses Walter, whose furry face fills up the other side of that window. Calm your engines down, both of you. You're better than this. I check the nest box in the mini hen house for eggs. Nope. I set out fresh feed. Cha-Cha comes over and bumps into my legs, which is her way of hugging. Good morning, beautiful. When are you going to grow up and lay me some eggs? Beep, 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 replies Cha-Cha. <laughs> Hopper shows up and I hand him the watering dish. Fill her up. And guess what? I think Disco and, and Walter are now officially enemies. Roosters don't have a lot of friends, says Hopper. Disco could be a very loud, very bossy hen, I say, with a very large comb. Wake up, Quinny, and smell the coffee, says Miss Porridge, walking onto the porch with a cup of her own. I only like hot chocolate, I point out. A rooster is a rooster is a rooster, she says. An egg is an egg is an egg, I say to Cha-Cha, but no rush. After the chicken chores, it's time for school, but Hopper still has to stay home. He invites me over that afternoon to work some more on the tonsils book. Absolutely, I say. You can work on the drawings while I'm in school. And then we can work on the words and ideas together later. Deal? Deal, he says. Bye. Hopper, wait. Can you come hang out with me at the bus stop at least? I doubt it. Mom barely lets me out for chickens. Phooey. I wish I could stay home with him. But after I get on the bus, I look out as we pass Hopper's house. I look for him in all the windows of his house that face the street, and he's right there in one of them. He's right there in his living room window, and he waves like he was looking for me, too. That makes me feel like we're still together, even though we're really not. Makes me think it's going to be a good day.
in school, I can't help it. I tell people all about how I got invited to see Miss Yoon's brand new baby and how Hopper and I are working together on an amazing book that his doctor is going to publish. Victoria's eyes get stuck right on me as I talk. I talk and talk and talk. I feel very special that my life is so exciting. Then Victoria starts talking about the pet she's getting from the animal shelter and how she hasn't made up her mind yet if she wants a puppy, a kitten, or an Angora rabbit. Or maybe I'll just get one of each. My daddy said I can have whatever I want and my house has plenty of space. I could probably start a whole petting zoo if I wanted. Now my eyes are on her hard. I bet she can feel me stare. My dad hasn't even taken me to that animal shelter once yet. The day gets worse when Miss Flavio keeps me inside for recess again. She gives me my minute math sheet from yesterday, which I did not finish in a minute. And she says, this is perfect opportunity to improve our arithmetic. Let's make the most of it. And I'm so glum that I slump there at my desk for the second day in a row. After I get home from school, I go straight to dad's office, which is really just a closet in the upstairs hallway. And I sit and wait forever for him to get off the phone. Dad, can you take me to the animal shelter? I'm free right now. Quinny, please. Please what? You promised last week. I'm in the middle of something very important. I have a big, but, but what if Victoria gets the very last puppy? Well, I have a big deadline. I can't just drop everything because you're whining. I don't want you to drop things. Just, I just want to see the shelter like you promised. Daddy's hair is messy and his eyes are extra saggy. And there's, there's something to be about the tired, angry way they look at me that makes a lump bump up in my throat. Keep it up, Quinny. Just keep it up. It's like a warning the way he says it. A snack makes everything better, at least while I'm chewing it. Then I go to see what Hopper's doing, since I just remembered we're supposed to be working on the tonsils book this afternoon. And it turns out he's on the phone, talking to Mr. Merkel about the tonsillectomies. I wait for them to finish, and then Hopper tells me that Dr. Merkel is excited to see the tonsils book at his checkup on Friday. Which means we need to get to work right away, so there's actually a tonsils book for him to look at. Hopper and I work the whole afternoon, even though his mom tries to distract us, even though his brothers try to annoy us. We ignore them all. We work and we work, 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 and we think and we draw and we write, and we think some more and argue. We erase and cross things out and tear stuff up. We change our minds and change them back again. We laugh. Dad isn't the only one with a big deadline. 